Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Morgellons Discussion and Microscopy Videos. I'm your host Jeremy Murphy and today I just want to wrap it up for the end of the year. I may get back on here and do another video or two, but today specifically I wanted to talk about the toll that raising awareness for Morgellons takes. And it's not really cut and dry like how this happens. But, you know, the reason that we're out there and that we're talking about Morgellons and sharing the, the research and telling people to take Lyme disease seriously is because the system doesn't do that right now. And in the meantime, people are sick. They're very, very sick, uh, especially with this bacteria that affects the brain. And I say sick, I mean like depressed, anxiety making stupid decisions, not thinking clearly. And all that craziness can just be avoided if Lyme disease was taken seriously up front, you know. And it's not just Lyme disease, but when I start talking about syphilis, then it really gets lonely around here. But that's really what Morgellons is, if you think about it. It's like... <laughs> If Lyme disease was only discovered in the 1970s, right? The late 1970s. And every time before then, you know, when they were looking through a microscope, they, they couldn't tell the difference between syphilis and Lyme disease. And Lyme disease, we know, causes Morgellons, which is <laughs> what you typically think of when you think of syphilis. So... And just walking around like that, walking around town like that, and being told that you need to stop picking at yourself and you need to get on a antidepressants and and things will be normal. I mean, that's just that's just a backwards way to do things. It's not really even doing anything about it. It's more covering it up. You know, the only thing that really made my skin better was seeing a Lyme disease specialist and having them take it seriously and, and treat it like it was an actual infection. And that helped quite a bit. But in the meantime, when you got other people suffering and you want to say, hey, this is something that you might want to consider, you know, they're going, fuck you. I see all the money that you're spending going on these damn supplements and and going to the doctor's visits that your insurance doesn't cover you know fuck that. i may have lyme disease but i don't want to fucking pay for it and eventually you know the people tell you to shut up about it they'll tell you you know you're obsessed with it and then eventually they'll say okay fuck you we're leaving we're gonna go talk to somebody else who who has better things to talk about so you got to know that if you're going to stand up for Morgellons, if you're going to stand up for Lyme disease, first of all, people don't want to hear about it, you know, and you're going to be talking about it until it changes. So if they don't want to hear about it one time, then they're not going to want to hear about it every time you want to talk about it. They don't want to think that anybody in their family could be dealing with it. And it really just comes down to the money, I believe. I believe it comes down to when you say Lyme disease, people see dollar signs going out the window in their minds. And that's got to change. You know, when you say Lyme disease, you know, they ought to be thinking, oh, no, that's terrible. That's got a long time chronic affliction, but... At least the insurance is going to cover the doctor's visits, the medications, the lab work. In my case, it's covering the latter two already. Not all my medications, like what I have to get from a compounding pharmacy, but that stuff works. You know, it helps a lot. You got to be able to hold down a job because nobody's going to take you seriously if, you, if you're not working. And you're gonna have a hard time paying for anything if you can't if you can't work and you can't come up with the money. But you know, I know that's that catch twenty two where it's like, how the fuck can I work when I can't focus on anything? I can't concentrate. 
And you know, I I know that a lot of people with Lyme disease end up getting on medication for OCD. A lot of people like myself, we just do not want to be on that medication. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it for the people who take it and it works for them. That's great, but for me, I don't like the effects that that medication has on me. And you may be in a state like like I'm in where you can't get medical marijuana, where that might be better for focus and concentration. You just can't get it here because it's not legal. And so, yeah, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the times I think about I'd, I've always wanted to move back out west and live out there for a while. I got a chance to go to Las Vegas last week. And that was great. I really did enjoy the experience out there, but coming back into town, I find myself going, man, I wish <laughs> I wish I was back out there. And a lot of it is just because a lot of it's because here, you know, it's it's a lot of these bridges that that are just burned down, you know. You had a great working friendship with somebody and then one day you don't. They just don't come around. They don't call. When you try to reach out to them, it's, it's silence. And you know that's because you're talking about the syphilis. But you also know that if you don't stop talking about it, then it's never going to change. And somebody else is going to end up 40 years old realizing that they've wasted their entire life trying to self-medicate with alcohol causing a whole bunch of problems along the way and then having to spend a lot of money to try to reverse all the damage from an infection that could have been diagnosed a lot sooner and it's not just the infection I mean, there's a lot of people going through a lot of crazy stuff. I've been through some of that crazy stuff. I don't know if an infection was involved or not, but it really comes down to what kind of a life can you build after all the craziness. And that's hard to do when the world's going one way and you've found the way that works for you is in the completely opposite direction. But you got to do that. You got to circle back around and go, okay, <laughs> these are the achievements in life that I missed that I could go back and accomplish now that I'm better. You may not have a lot of support for that financially, emotionally. You may be alone. But you got to make it happen. You got it because, believe it or not, and you should. You are worth it. You are worth going back and doing those things and fulfilling your dreams. You know, that's one of the bad things about Mark Ellens is that you end up feeling like you're not worth it, like you're a substandard human being, that you don't deserve happiness, that you don't deserve to... You don't deserve happiness. And it's just not true, you know? You don't have to feel like you're going to give your skin condition to somebody else. You don't have to feel like... You don't deserve to be happy, because you do. And the work that you put into that will result in a better life afterwards. Maybe not right away. You may be stuck in a proper room for 10 years or longer. But you're not going to get out if you can't, A, resolve the condition. And that means securing a Lyme disease specialist. And B, putting what you can towards a new life afterwards. And that's hard to do when the world's going the opposite direction that you want to go. 
when the only person you have to rely on at the end of the day to say you're doing the right thing is yourself that's got to be good enough you got to do it because this is your second chance and you can pull yourself out of this hole what do you guys think let me know leave a comment down below hope everybody's having a great holiday season with the friends and the families and we'll talk to you if not now maybe next year take care and have a pleasant day